Hello everyone, welcome back to Flyout. It's been a while, and that's mainly because of certain minor frustrations that I have with Flyout. First of all, no undos, and second of all, I have to disconnect my throttle quadrant every time I want to play it, because it doesn't understand when you've got two different controllers that it should only read one of them. It makes things annoying, so I have to pull the plug on the throttle quadrant. So, yeah, anyway, uh, it, the undo thing is more important. Uh, that has caused me some frustration in making this, which is a replica of not the B36, but the XB36, the prototype of the Peacemaker. And the prototype is distinguished by the fact that it didn't have jet engines, uh, it just had the Wasp Majors, and also it had these really huge tires, these really huge single tires. Now, unfortunately, I've had to downscale this, uh, right now, we're not the full size of the XB36 at all, and that is because of certain limitations here. When you see the wheel diameter, we've sort of maxed it out. There, there are other settings as well where we really can't push it too much larger. And so I've decided to go with a downscale version and a lighter version, but don't worry, we've got the full powered Wasp Majors. So... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've made sure that our engines have exactly the right stats. So we are remarkably overpowered. And in this case, uh, air-cooled, the Wasp Major was air-cooled. You can get all the stats for the Wasp Majors uh, from uh, Wikipedia or whatever. And so I'm reasonably confident that in all these numbers, the compression ratio, the diameter of the valves, I, I, don't, I don't think I got the supercharger in particular, but these should work. And so everything is great. Uh, the mixture, I, I put the RPM limiter based on what we have in the performance curve here. So uh, for those not familiar with Flyout, it's sort of like automation for planes, if you've ever played automation, though maybe that's even rarer than Flyout. Uh, but yeah, now there's a lot of engine tweaking. And what we have here is we see that we have a dramatic power fall off past 3,190. Uh, RPM, so I just limit it to 3000 and so we don't encounter that, uh, which will make the engines quit. So the first thing you have to do is make sure you limit the RPM to the point where, you know, you start losing power up here because otherwise your engines will just die on you. So we need to avoid that. So definitely do the RPM limiter. Other uh, flaws that I encountered and had to fix is that first of all make sure you've got app gas uh, the piston engines and the wasp majors run on app gas so uh, make sure that you've got app gas if you use something else you might be duped into thinking that it's working properly but it's actually not giving you the power you're supposed to get uh, what we have is the piston engine here a gearbox here and then a propeller here i I don't know why they put us through the thing with the gearbox, uh, to be honest. And I've, I've got no gears. I mean, it's just one gear straight. And that works fine. And, you know, it's a plane. Anyway, uh, it's not a car, but a <laughs> pain voice. But anyway, the plane actually did have uh, propellers with three blades. And we are going counterclockwise and pusher prop style. And so that has to be configured right. I love pusher props. Uh, I put radiators here just for covering the front end of the engine. I, I, uh, I'll probably make a nicer fairing later, but we have to make sure that it works. You know, it sort of looks good enough, but we need to make sure it works. This end, yeah, I mean, uh, technically the actual one didn't have an open front. Uh, I sort of thought about having air intake cooling it or something like that, but it actually had a closed front end on those nacelles. But I've taken some liberties, let's face it. So, let's take it outside and see how it goes. Okay. It's loud though. There it is. Off we go. I need to change how those reactions track. Maybe I should turn them down. Oh, that's far too much.
Okay, actually, it's really loud. <laughs> uh, let's cut that down. So looking good. I mean, well, except for landing gear or retracting weird, but I can fix that. It does have to be where it is because of the center mass. Now the cockpit doesn't look exactly right. It's a B-29-ish cockpit instead of the cockpit that they want for the B-36. But I can't figure out how to... I mean, except for adding extra bobs on it, like spheres or whatever. I can't figure out how to make a custom cockpit right now. I'd love to be able to import my own models in here. I just don't know how to do it. I don't know if it's possible. But just for the cockpits in particular. The fuselage is uh, fine. I just need custom cockpits. Yeah, I need to fix the bare engines, but I just wanted to make sure it worked, right? There is a supercharger that should kick in at, kick in at 3,000 meters. Or we could press U to activate, I don't know. Anyway, I think the more important thing is to figure out whether I can land it. Considering it's fairly large still, as far as fly-out planes go. Oh, and the right lighting it looks good. I have to figure out how to drop the UI as well if that's possible. Just so we can get the nice looks of the planes. But for now, I'll focus on flying it. Nearly 200 knots about the jet engines, but then again, we're really, really light. But what if I just added the extra mass in? Well, but then our wing is too small. But we could add the extra mass, but I don't know if it would prove anything or not. Okay, but let's focus on landing though. Are my flaps flapping? Can't really tell. I feel like the inner engines are doing something different than the middle and outer engines. I'll have to check on their numbers to make sure. May it's just a visual thing. There is a tiny bit of wind. I really wanted the B-36 in some other sim where I would have the real cockpit or something like in Flight Sim. Because it's such a monumentally complicated plane and complicated cockpit. Especially the engineer station if you can imagine. It's doing weird things, it's doing weird things. Oh, a little bit harder than I intended. Okay. Slow down. I'm, I'm pressing break, I'm pressing B really hard, I swear. Maybe it's just an engage, disengage thing. No, uh, I don't know. B is definitely not doing anything useful right now. Maybe I've got too much idle power on them. But then... We should have brakes, darn it. I think I can't make that turn. Let me just turn on to the other runway. We will get this back safely. Cockpit view. Not exactly the right position. That was like the gun, uh, bomber's position or whatever. Bomb site position. I guess there was a little bit of flaps going. Yep. Eh, maybe just the right amount of idle power. But then when I put jet engines on, I probably need to somehow figure out how to make this bigger to put jet engines on though. The problem is yeah, I don't know if I can make the landing gear big enough. 
All right, so uh, when we have breaks on here, do we not? We it said breaks. Bring zero to one. Those are really big wheels. That, that if they have brakes on, they should break. Maybe response speed units per second is a little bit big, but I know it's definitely brake response. So we should have brakes. I just wasn't feeling it. So I don't know what's going. On. Maybe power source is necessary. No, we don't need it from a gearbox. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with the brakes. But uh, let's just go through everything else. So again, the engine uh, numbers, we're not shifting gears or anything. Uh, oh, but when I pressed U, uh, one of them probably has, uh, yeah, this one I had that configured. So we did have the outer engines do something different. I had them on the supercharger uh, because I pressed U at some point to test it. We might as well just put that on everything. But it's got the gear to altitude as well. So uh, basically, uh, air cooled, radial, four rows, seven cylinders per row, so 28 cylinders, 146 meter, a millimeter bore, 152 millimeter stroke, seven compression ratio, uh, four valves, and we just maxed that out. Uh, I think that's about right. Maybe it anticipated that I would want a wasp major. And so two speed supercharger, that's definite. Figuring out whether the gearbox was really necessary. Ultimately, I decided that uh, the gearbox it was it was fine with just one gear uh 1.5 bar manifold and that i don't remember if i found that as a number or whether i just decided that, that was a good number uh you can figure it out by the performance curve of course and these numbers down here and yeah so displacement is right because that's calculated by the by the numbers that we have up here and mixture as you see it and the rpm limiter is very important so that you don't kill the engine before you even get started and then the propeller they were constant speed props so but i've got it on mock but probably i should have a target rpm i thought it's reset to target rpm but it probably doesn't matter but yeah i'll just leave it on mock because it works right now no blade twist i didn't put any of that in maybe that would be more efficient or something but i didn't feel a need for it and as again as far as the gearbox is concerned we've got nada basically no gear up no gear down make sure that you've got the inputs right so uh, here we've got the engine and then the gearbox says input piston engine and you can select which piston engine. Of course, you should go with the one that's closest, 0.2 meters away. That's that one. Uh, so each of them is uh, paired with the piston engine closest to them. And then the propeller has to be uh, powered by the gearbox. So in this power source, you pick the right gearbox, which is the one closest to it. And so then it will work out. But yeah. Yeah, it took me a little bit of time to sort this all out, and I don't know if I can upscale this very well, but we'll see. But this is the prototype, this is the test model, my first, my first piston engine plane in flyout. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.